for those of you who are relatively new to YouTube and are not fully up to speed on who and what Venom Phoenix is, you may be a little confused by all the contempt for him over his latest string of DMCA's. And if you are a Christian who is falling for his sap and feeling sorry for him, please take heed. Do not give him one cent of your money, and do not let him lie to you. Venom Phoenix has a long, sordid, and well-documented history of pathologically lying and repeatedly breaking the law through fraud and perjury. In this video, I will highlight much of the antisocial and sometimes criminal behavior of Venom Fang X, who will just go on crying persecution and unwanted hatred by the evil, godless atheists who have never demanded anything of him except that he tell the truth. This is the story of a boy named Sean. Hey guys, uh, really, really quick video. Um, I would like to send out a request for a, uh, a video camera. You know, I'm in university and I simply can't afford a nice camera. Um, but I know some of you guys out there, uh, either you are endowed with financial blessing or you... Indeed, some people are endowed with financial blessings. And Sean is one of them. He comes from an affluent family who lives in a mansion. Yet here he is, painting himself as the starving student, relying on the kindness of strangers and trying to get a free camera. And, needless to say, he was successful. Just three days after this request, he posted this video. So a really nice guy sent me a message, said, yeah, I'll buy you a camera. So this one guy, I'm not going to drop his name now, I, I don't want him to get harassed, but uh, he, he went out of, I mean, he went out on a limb and he just bought me. Uh, it's not here yet, I'm using my old camera right now, but he went out and he just bought me uh, like an $800 camera. So, let's sum up. Sean comes from money, but he misrepresented himself as someone who could not afford a digital camcorder, and then he accepted an $800 camera. Of course, this wouldn't be his only act of acquiring gifts and money through deception. Sean liked to exploit his Christian subscribers' devotion to their faith by encouraging them to donate to his ministry, thereby proving that any greedy, unscrupulous person with a camera and no supervision can open up a YouTube account and call it a ministry. Despite his favorite claim that atheists have no love or morality within them, he has displayed callous attitudes toward other people under the guise of God's judgment. When answering the question, why won't God heal amputees, he coldly replied, Where in the Bible does it say God will heal amputees? End of story, right? God never said he would, he doesn't. That aligns perfectly with my definition of God. My definition of God does not say God will heal me if I cut off my arm. Why, why should God heal amputees? He's the one that allowed you to lose your arm in the first place. So here's the, here's the real question. Why do people lose their arms? Well, the Bible answers that in the first three pages. Mankind was created in connection with God. Everything was perfect. There was no pain, no death, no sickness. It was, it was great. It was good. However, God gave mankind a choice. Love and obey God or hate and disobey God. The reason God did that. Forced love is basically rape, and God loves us too much to force us to love him. So he says, choose. So mankind said, mm, okay, and they chose to disobey God. So we have been separated from God, and that's where death and pain and the loss of your arms came in. So does God have a moral obligation to heal someone who has sinned against him? Absolutely not. So why doesn't God heal amputees? Because they don't deserve their arms. We deserve to die. That's what the Bible teaches. Sorry if you don't like that. Harsh. Apparently in Sean's case, the price of God's love is the forfeit of compassion and empathy for his fellow human beings. And it gets worse. We read in Deuteronomy 28, a book written by Moses, a curse that was promised to the Israelites if they rejected their God. I can't read all of Deuteronomy 28 to you right now, but you can look it up on the internet if you'd like. It talks about how Israel will be scattered to the ends of the world, and how they will be few in number, and their enemies would destroy them if they rejected their God. Now, if we look at recent tragedies, and they are tragedies, like the Holocaust, we can't say that was God's blessing on Israel. That was clearly not a blessing. So, it seems to me Israel has rejected their Messiah. I, I can't explain it any other way. The promises of the curse on Israel, if they rejected their God, have come true. Deuteronomy 28 has come true. So Sean has stated outright that the murder of six million European Jews during the Holocaust 
was divine punishment for the ancient Israelites rejecting the Christian Messiah. What makes this statement all the more cold-blooded is the fact that Sean's own family, which he has claimed on numerous occasions to love so dearly, is Jewish. This means that he has to believe that his own family deserves the same fate. Over the years, Sean has made a name for himself by producing a number of videos about creationism and what he thinks are refutations of biological evolution and the Big Bang Theory. His videos inspired the YouTube user Thunderfoot's epic series entitled Why Do People Laugh at Creationists? which was named for one instance of unintentional hilarity. When I claim that there was a worldwide flood, I, I get laughed at. I get laughed at. I get laughed at. Overwhelmed by the lunacy and inaccuracy of Sean's statements about cosmology, biology, and everything else that he clearly has no understanding of, it was Thunderfoot who dubbed him the poster boy for creationist stupidity, or PCS for short. In July 2008, Sean abruptly deleted many of his videos and announced that he was shutting down his ministry because he claimed that he had received death threats. Hey guys, this is Venom Fang X with some bad news. I've been receiving death threats and uh, against my life and the life of my family, my my loved ones. So uh, I'll be shutting down this ministry. I simply can't continue it while this is going on. Um, I've contacted the authorities and the police and uh, these aren't just idle threats I've been getting threats since I've opened up my ministry I've, you know I've understood from the beginning that people hate God and they hate people who speak about God but these people uh, these ones in particular who've been making these threats they also have personal information about me which would make it possible for them to uh, come to my house and actually hurt me or the people I care about so uh, I've been in contact with the police, and I'm taking every precaution necessary to guard against these twisted individuals. But uh, until then, and probably indefinitely, I will be closing down this ministry. I've deleted many of my videos, and uh, this is this is it, guys. He did not, however, close his channel, although he clearly implied that he would. He continued to log in, rate, and favorite videos. In a few weeks, all was forgiven or forgotten, and he was back to making videos again, with no explanation of the outcome of the alleged death threats. Many viewers agreed that there probably had been no such threats, and that he had never had any intention of closing his channel or shutting down his ministry. A popular theory posits that Sean had been unable to cope with being incapable of countering the many thorough reputations from Thunderfoot's videos, and instead invented a story of receiving death threats as a way of getting rid of all of his refuted videos without conceding that it was all garbage. Or perhaps he just needed a dose of sympathy from his well-wishers. Not to mention aggravate the paranoia that some Christians have from their imaginary persecution in the predominantly Christian West. One thing that had always left Sean open for ridicule is how heavily he censors his channel. Anyone, theist or non-theist, who posted negative or critical comments or sent him less than appreciative private messages was immediately blocked and their comments promptly removed. But Sean was not content on merely censoring his own channel. He decided that he was going to censor other people's channels as well. In the summer of 2008, several videos featuring Venom Fang X were disabled by Digital Millennium Copyright Act takedown notices. While a few may have contained legitimate copyright claims, such as unauthorized re-uploads in their entirety, the overwhelming majority were refutations, criticisms, and parodies, and therefore all protected under the Fair Use Clause. This means that someone had filed numerous false copyright claims under penalty of perjury. Thunderfoot was among those hit with the baseless takedown notices. Sean denied having filed the DMCAs against Thunderfoot, putting the blame on an unnamed friend of his having accidentally including Thunderfoot's videos in a long list of videos that he admitted he had removed for featuring his image, thereby incriminating himself. To deflect attention away from his own admitted unlawful behavior, and to once again incite sympathy from his flock, he began insinuating that Thunderfoot was dangerous and wanted to cause harm to him and his family. Unless, of course, you are as vindictive uh, and interested in doing me harm as I suspect. In which case, no, there's no reasoning with you. You just want to do me harm, and I can't stop you. Which would then make me very uncomfortable with the fact that you do have my personal information. Um, in which case, 
I suspect I might end up killed with my family hurt. Uh, but that's between you and God, and if it does come to that, uh, yeah. Don't, don't let it come to that, Thunderfoot. That would be, uh, not, not just bad for me, it would be bad for you, because God says he is, he is the Avenger, uh, and he, he doesn't let that stuff slide. Now, I'm not accusing you of threatening to hurt me or my family. Yes, actually he did. But Thunderfoot did not hook himself into this childish attempt to turn a legal matter into a flame war and gave Sean an ultimatum. Face legal action, be reported to YouTube for DMCA abuse, or delete his account and exile himself from YouTube for an entire year. Sean's response to this ultimatum was completely unprecedented and can be appropriately described as psychotic break. Do you guys want to see a magic trick? I'm going to make an atheist disappear. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> Claiming that I commit perjury without a proper understanding of what the laws of perjury entail makes you not only uh, a illiterate when it comes to the law. <laughs> you have nothing, nothing to threaten me with, nothing to do with all of your strength. <laughs> Actually, the definition of blackmail is when someone threatens to publicly reveal information about someone else unless certain demands are met, but that is beside the point. Sean had obviously not anticipated that Thunderfoot would have no intention of letting the DMCA's slide. At this point, Thunderfoot had enlisted the legal advice of YouTube user DPR Jones, an intellectual property lawyer who had offered his advice pro bono. Sean had also not anticipated that an underling would come forward to expose his deception. YouTube user Together for Peace, also known as Jack, admitted his role as the aforementioned unnamed friend who filed the numerous DMCAs on Sean's behalf. However, he had warned Sean against filing claims against videos that definitely did not violate copyright and simply lampooned him or refuted him, specifically the Thunderfoot videos. Jack had refused to issue the takedown notices against these videos, including Thunderfoot's, and revealed the private messages that he and Sean had exchanged, thus proving that Sean had not only lied about not having filed the DMCAs against Thunderfoot, but knew in advance that they were bogus and that he could face account termination for filing them. It's one thing for you to be to say one thing, but when you get up on camera and you say you didn't do it, that someone else did it, and it's clear that, you know, YouTube has even indicated it was you that did it, and you're still saying it wasn't you that did it. And so I wanted to give him a chance to, to clear this up. And so I sent him a message saying, quote, I praise God for how he's used you to speak his gospel. However, based on the emails you've sent me, you've not been telling the truth to people. You filed that DMCA. You listed those videos of Thunderfoot, and I've got the email to prove it. Tell the truth or I will. As a final act of mercy... Thunderfoot agreed to forego taking legal action against Sean, as well as reporting him to YouTube, in exchange for reading a public apology, acknowledging all the lies, deception, and wrongdoing on his part. This is an apology from myself to Thunderfoot and other YouTube users. I accept that I deliberately and repeatedly lied to cover up my wrongdoings, both in emails to Thunderfoot and in my videos. I apologize for lying to Thunderfoot and to all of those whom I have deceived. On the 15th of September, I posted a video in which I alleged that Thunderfoot had committed blackmail. I made this allegation without having taken legal advice. I now accept that I was wrong to have made this allegation, that it was and is totally without legal merit. Again, for this, I apologize to Thunderfoot. It is apparent just by watching this apology video that it was pre-written by someone with legal knowledge and not Sean, and his emotionless demeanor indicates that the only thing he was truly sorry about was being made to publicly admit his own blatant dishonesty. But none of that really mattered. In the statements he read, 
Sean specifically acknowledged that he now understood what a real copyright claim entails, and that knowingly filing a false and malicious DMCA is a crime. I now understand that the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA for short, is a U.S. copyright law. A DMCA takedown notice is filed under penalty of perjury, and filing a malicious or knowingly false claim of infringement is a criminal act in the United States. If you serve a malicious or false DMCA notice on someone, then that person has the right to pursue civil action, which enables them to recover damages and legal fees. These are potential legal consequences of, of misrepresentations in a DMCA takedown notice. In February 2009, Sean openly whined about people on YouTube who hate him in this video entitled Love. He stated that atheists hate him because they don't have the capacity to love, because they don't believe in the Christian God, and that the hatred he was receiving was undeserved and the equivalent of murder. And I want to say this to you atheists, something you'll never say to me. I love you, and if I've offended you, I'm sorry. If I've done wrong, I'm sorry. I want to do better, and I hope we can be friends. But we'll never hear that from the other side because they don't uphold Christian values. Christian values, which are from God himself. And that's why you know they're ungodly. Because our message of love, they have no love in them. They have no love in them. So all the science and whatever gibberish you want to you want to spout at me? You don't have any love in you. You have no love in you. So it's all worthless. Two months later, YouTube user GoGreen18, also known as Lacey, an atheist, attempted to engage him in a discussion regarding the Bible and showed him far more kindness than he was clearly used to getting. So I thought that for this video I would go straight to the heart of what I think a lot of our dispute is, Sean, and that's over the Bible. I've been watching, uh, re-watching a lot of your videos, particularly the video entitled The Bible is True. Um, at the same time, I've been reading several books and consulting a lot of uh, professors and internet websites as well. Links in the description for those of you who are interested concerning the history of the Bible according to um, scholarly sources, historians, etc. Now, this is a subject that I have been wanting to grapple with for a long time time but this is such an extensive um, topic guys for the viewers um, that I am just overwhelmed with the idea that right now I'm about to put this in a five minute video there is so much information you could probably do a whole college course on this and still uh, glaze over a lot of the details now um, so I'm going to hit the highlight points that I think are important to addressing the questions that I have for you Sean and other than that we'll just have to kind of play it out by ear because it is you know such a huge thing for all her time and effort to give him a means to mend his damaged reputation with the atheist community, he had this to say. Now before we get into this, Go Green, I want you to know that while I like you a lot, I think God has blessed you with a wonderful personality and a beautiful smile. The fact is you've come onto YouTube with an agenda. On top of that, Go Green, you are a former LDS member. You are a member of the Mormon Church, which as far as I'm concerned is the Church of Satan. So while I'm glad you got out of the Mormon church, you have gone from one lie to another. The things you say on YouTube are so clearly false and so easily refuted that I'm amazed that you can come out here, out here with the confidence that you do. My advice to you, Go Green, before I answer your questions is get off YouTube. Or if you're going to post videos, delete everything you've posted against God because one day you're going to give an account for it. All of the thousands and thousands of people that you've discouraged and deceived you are a deceiver and you yourself are deceived and I'm warning you because I love you from one person to another as I love everyone you are in such danger that I fear for you the biggest danger is you've come on YouTube as some kind of know-it-all and you've called into question things that you clearly don't have much knowledge about you haven't even used critical thinking skills to evaluate your own arguments until that day you are indeed headed towards hell you are going to be damned, and inadvertently you are damning others through your videos. After publicly complaining about how atheists hate him and treat him so badly, when one atheist offered him an olive branch, what did he do? He told her that she is headed for an eternity of everlasting torture at the hands of his merciful, loving God, and that she should delete all of her videos and get off YouTube. Perhaps Sean just doesn't understand that threatening people and telling them to go away does not ordinarily pass as civil conversation. 
Around the same time, Sean got fired from his job for the third time for proselytizing. This time, accosting customers with homemade DVDs of Kent Hovind lectures during work at the video store where he had been employed. Rather than live and learn and find another job, he decided to turn to e-begging. I guess what I'm asking you guys right now is, I think there's a way for me to, to do exactly that. To get out there and preach the gospel full time and make the same amount of money I was making before, where I'd otherwise have to keep my mouth shut behind a cash register. And, you know, you guys may not have the freedom or the ability to make a sacrifice like that and say, you know, I'm willing to quit my job or to lose my job and pre to preach the gospel. I don't think a lot of you guys have the freedom. You guys have to make your money and keep your mouth shut. But you guys can afford to set me free, <laughs> to set me loose on the world and preach the gospel. Sean, the rich kid who still lived at home at his parents' mansion, was now asking his subscribers to pay him to make videos. He requested 500 of his subscribers to each send him $1 per month, further stating, as soon as I hit 500, okay, then anything above and beyond that I'm going to put towards Sick Kids Hospital. In fact, I think that will be my policy um, if this indeed turns out to be a, an idea that will go on. Every month that I earn over 500 a month, 500 will be put towards you know, my own savings, but anything over and above that I'll put towards charity. In what is, in my opinion, his worst example of dishonesty so far, he reneged on his promise to donate to the Sick Kids Hospital and began to ask for almost double the amount he had initially requested. When people accused him of pocketing far more than the initial $500, he posted a video of himself donating $100 increments to various charities, none of which were the Sick Kids Hospital. More importantly, he failed to acknowledge the fact that donating $100 to individual charities was not what he had promised to do. He had promised to donate everything that went above and beyond the initial $500. DPR Jones informed Sean via video responses that he had reported Sean to the Toronto police and that the Sick Kids Hospital had also been informed that he was collecting money in their name and that legally he was in breach of duty as the trustee of donations intended for the hospital. Putting Sean on the defensive, he stated that he had every intention of reporting his income to the Canada Revenue Agency which is doubtful as he couldn't even stick to the original agreement of how much of the donations he would keep for himself versus what he would give to charity. The problem is uh, it became very complicated because people would donate large amounts and say don't donate this to charity. So, you know, and I, I've, I've obviously saved all these emails and stuff just so in case I need to ever use them as proof in any which way. Um, and then another problem is one person actually donated 500 bucks, even though I said not to, and if you're watching this, don't think I'm not grateful. I mean, that's totally, it's wonderful that you did that. Um, it's just confusing in, to me, because what do I do then? Do I just donate everything else that everyone else donated, even the ones who said they didn't want it to? No, obviously not. So, anyways, I removed that video that I first made. However, um, you know, it's kind of like everything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. However, the more he attempted to defend himself, the more he incriminated himself. Rather than show concern for how other people's money was being handled, he started talking about his own expenses and finances and raised the monthly donation goal from $500 to $900, practically implying that it was his subscribers' responsibility to financially support him. But I think I've been pretty transparent with what I've been doing. I've been buying DVDs. I bought a new microphone for my camera. I pay 400 a month insurance for my car. Um, you know, I pay for the gas. I, what, what else do I do? I, I pay for parking tickets at the university where I go to. Um, you know, th these kinds of things. I haven't really been stealing money. Now, did I donate everything I earned over 500 to charity like I originally said? Well, keep in mind, and you have to keep this in mind, what I asked for originally was $1 from 500 individuals. So far, here we are at the, end, at the end of the month, I've yet to reach 500 individuals. I've only reached 450, give or take a, a few numbers there, maybe 453, something like that. So I've yet to even reach my original goal. Now, I have indeed made more money than I originally anticipated. I have expenses, guys. It's not free. Um, 400 a month, bang, to the car. Um, 30 to 60 bucks easily a week to fill up with a gas tank. Twelve bucks a pop for parking at this university I've been going to. Six bucks for a Wendy's meal or a Subway sandwich or something like that. Um, 
you know, these things begin to pile up. I need, logically, uh, I need about 900 a month just to live and, and to preach the gospel. During this time, he revealed the real reason why he resorted to e-begging. Okay, his expenses have nearly doubled in one month. But it is only when you read the description to the video that the true horror of Venom's dishonesty is revealed. I won't read it all, but I want to highlight this passage. I need $400 a month for the car, because my dad is the one paying for my school, my car, my cell phone, my house, my everything. He said that the $400 a month would be my way of pulling some of my own weight and showing some responsibility. The reason I didn't mention this when I first asked for donations is because my dad did not ask me for the $400 a month until he found out I was receiving donations and preaching the gospel full time. I protested at first. Just consider that for a moment. He had not told his own family that he was collecting donations and was prepared to allow his father to continue paying for everything for him. Not only will Venom steal from a children's hospital, he will also deceive his own family. Mary, there's been a lot of talk about Anthony Powell two days after police say he killed a student and himself here on campus. Rounding out the month of April was the shocking news of a YouTube murder-suicide. Anthony Powell, who had been known as Tony48219, was a highly unbalanced Christian creationist who was infamous for his maniacal shouting rants against atheists, evolution, and black women. <laughs> 2429 here. It's all over. It is all over. The atheists have been defeated. These motherfuckers have been caught on their bullshit. <laughs> and Venom Bay X is the truth. Venom Bay X shut them down. I'm going to tell you just how, I'm going to show you and tell you just how pathetic and ignorant and stupid these atheists are. My God, it's, just, it's beautiful. They're angry. They have so much rage and hate in them. Look at this. This is so fucking pathetic, I swear to God. Look, 2481 on his back. Tragically, Anthony shot and killed YouTube user Asia McGowan at the college they both attended before turning the gun on himself. Within days, Sean posted this video. Hi there, everyone out there on YouTube. This video is... Hi there, everyone out there on YouTube. This video is concerning Tony48219. Despite that contrived hiccup, Sean didn't show an ounce of emotion throughout the remainder of the video, nor did he again feign being too choked up to speak. In fact, the rest of the video was flawlessly articulated without hesitation. In the video, he went out of his way to distance himself from Anthony, despite the fact that, in life, Anthony had been one of Sean's most impassioned followers. Venom Fang X has already disproved everything he said. I support him fully. I, I support him. I agree with everything he's saying. He's correct. He's right. It's all there is to it. I don't need it. I don't need to know nothing else. Sean concluded that Anthony had not been a true Christian and opportunistically brought up a completely unrelated case of suicide in which the father of that person linked the suicide to Richard Dawkins' book, The God Delusion. God doesn't say, well, I guess you're better than that person. He says, you're not better than me. And I'm going to judge you according to my standard, not according to everyone else, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so look, we've all lied. We've all stolen. We've all blasphemed God's name. Jesus said, if you even look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery in your heart. Sean also took this time to delve into street preaching, now accosting strangers out in public in a very Ray Comfort style of proselytizing. In one video in which he speaks with young Muslim men, Sean employed a nicer method of being offensive and inserted these images within the video with captions calling the Muslim Messiah the Antichrist. A few weeks later, Sean dropped this bombshell. He announced that he was leaving YouTube due to death threats against his family by Muslims. Can't imagine why. In the text to video, he stated that he never intended to offend or insult anyone's beliefs. In addition, his website was taken offline with a message from his parents, stating that they were shutting down the site and that they did not share their son's beliefs. Sean then handed the Venom Fang X channel to YouTube user Girup, who, unlike Sean, was not so hypersensitive about negative comments and did not censor the channel with the extremity that Sean had 
but Sean has always had a hard time keeping promises. Three months later, he posted an 11-minute temper tantrum over Thunderfoot's sit-down discussion with Ray Comfort. Here's my problem. Your entire shtick here on YouTube, ever since you've gotten here, is to make fun and ridicule people like me. People who do exactly what you just told us to do, to sit back in a chair with your arms outstretched and, s and wonder, well, maybe there is something behind the universe, something we're, we're not totally seeing. And as soon as we start to wonder and maybe even come to some answers and start to think, maybe, maybe there is a God, you want to make fun of us and you want to ridicule us and stick us back in your little narrow-minded, naturalistic box. You don't actually want us to think what's outside the universe, what caused everything. So, you know what, you're, you're just a damn hypocrite. That's all there is to it. You're an absolute damn hypocrite. So tell you what, why don't you delete every video you've ever made where you've made fun of people who believe in God and, you know, encourage others to make fun of people who dare to actually think outside your stupid little box, okay? And then come back to YouTube when you're, you're ready to actually take your own advice and start thinking, okay? Start critically thinking about the world and universe you live in and start reading your Bible without your little... Ah, man, you're just... It's hard to believe that almost an entire year prior to this, his DMCA dispute with Thunderfoot had arisen from the fact that Sean didn't like Thunderfoot using his footage in his videos without his permission. He had specifically referred to it as stealing. For filing a DMCA against him for stealing my video, well, Thunderfoot says that he has a plan, an ultimatum for me. Ah, well, Thunderfoot, what is your ultimatum? I'm curious. I'd love to hear about this because, you know, I think that's so fair that you get to steal my videos and then make me a hearse. Sean must have had a change of heart with the newfound understanding of fair use, because in the video he posted, he used Thunderfoot's footage. And considering that Sean was supposed to be in hiding from Muslims during this time, it is highly unlikely that he sought Thunderfoot's permission before uploading his video. Not that he would have needed to anyway, because that's what the fair use clause cites. In December 2009, Sean inexplicably returned to the Venom Fang X channel full-time, without mentioning what had happened to those dangerous Muslims who had allegedly threatened him and his family. Within a few short weeks, he was back to his old habits, and issued a new string of baseless DMCAs. However, this time he could no longer claim ignorance of the law, not after the Venom Fang X apologizes to the Internet's video from 14 months prior. I now understand that the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA for short, is a U.S. copyright law. A DMCA takedown notice is filed under penalty of perjury, and filing a malicious or knowingly false claim of infringement is a criminal act in the United States. Once again, he was openly committing perjury, and insisted that he was doing so to protect his family from harm. Hi there, everyone out there on YouTube. Recently, the atheists on YouTube have gone too far. Usually, they're content to one-star my videos, or post really nasty comments, or make inflammatory videos. But in this case, they're actually endangering my life by publishing personal information. They're uh, endangering my family. They're trying to get me offline permanently and have my account and videos deleted. And they're trying to have uh, lawsuit action be taken against me. Basically, anything they can and will do. They're after, they're after blood. They want blood. In what has to be the ultimate act of imbecility, Sean filed DMCA claims against DPR Jones, the same lawyer that had advised Thunderfoot during his DMCA dispute. After a few years of asserting that he knew more about science than a scientist, was Sean now pretending that he knew more about the law than a lawyer? For the sake of my family, because I love them dearly, and so not wish them to be harmed, I did the only thing I could to remove the video, as I am certain asking you to remove it would have been fruitless, seeing as you probably do wish to do me and my family harm. If you want to make this a legal matter, kindly ask yourself, if yourself this, is your video more important than the safety of my family? You may object and say that videos pose no harm. The video itself is harmless, but it is the audience itself that your video continues to spur on that is my concern. I kindly ask you, for the sake of my family, if nothing else, to allow those videos to disappear without a fuss. If my request is denied, you will be forfeiting the safety of my family in favour of continuing to endanger me and them. 
and keep a video online that frankly does nothing but promote hatred. Is that what you stand for? I would like to think better of you. So I will see what you do next. I hope that you do the right thing and understand that that is why I DMCA'd you. It was because I love my family and will do anything to protect them. Oh my good God, Sean, what a bag of shit. If you would do anything to protect them, you would not be back on YouTube. You fuckwit. DPR Jones gave Sean 10 days to delete his channel or face legal action, promising that this time there would be no last minute reprieve. And even though DPR said that he would not accept an apology this time around, Sean gave it a go anyway, but he couldn't even bring himself to say the words and posted a text video instead. The next day, Sean left YouTube forever for the third time and once again cited his family's safety as his reason. Sean closed his account on January 9, 2010, but could not resist the opportunity of getting in the last word, which, as usual, was a complete lie. Okay, forget the, forget the green screen. What's been going on on YouTube has been stressing me out like crazy. I'm being harassed by malevolent people who are bent, who, whose every waking moment of every day, all they can think about is hurting other people. The videos they upload only hurt people. Everything they do... This one user in particular named DPR Jones, someone just sent me a video clip of him asking an underage girl to strip naked on webcam on his blog TV. This is... Pedophilia is a serious crime. This was Sean's last-ditch effort to deflect attention away from his wrongdoing and garner more sympathy from his fans. But instead of successfully discrediting DPR Jones, he only succeeded in further exposing himself as a wanton liar. For starters, the 17-year-old girl he's referring to is the YouTube user Girl Next Door DK, also known as Tanya. However, the topless female in the blog TV broadcasts was not her. That female was the YouTube user Steph Zula, who has given me permission to reveal her identity, and at the time of the broadcast was 22 years old. Secondly, an adult man lusting after a 17-year-old female is not a pedophile. Pedophilia is defined as having a sexual desire for prepubescent children. Lastly, and most importantly, Sean was the one who had uploaded the footage of DPR Jones's blog TV segment under the title DPR Jones Asking Underage 17-Year-Old Girl to Reveal Breasts on Camera Report Pedophilia. The maker kindly provides an email address to write to in order to get information about how to report me. As many of you may be aware, when you send emails, they can carry with them a lot of information, including the IP address from which it is sent. A number of people emailed this address and received a response, and thereby obtained the IP address from the location from which the responses were being sent. Now I hope that you're all desperate to know where that is. And unfortunately, I can't tell you. And the reason I can't tell you is because if I did, I would be disclosing the name and location of Benham's school. That's right. The email responses were coming from Benham's school. So Sean had managed to dig himself even deeper into his criminal hole. He had been in enough trouble for openly committing perjury against the lawyer, but now he was guilty of committing both slander and libel. In addition, he began giving out DPR Jones's personal information, obtained through the DMCA counter notifications, to anyone who inquired so that they could file bogus complaints against him. The very thing that Sean had always accused others of doing to him, he was now openly doing to someone else. As it turned out, DPR Jones was not the only person who had been investigating Sean's erratic behavior. YouTube user Jordan Owen42 revealed that he had been conversing with Sean's father, Hilton, over a period of several months. Whenever Sean would upload a video, Jordan would inform Hilton, who would then attempt to intercept Sean's continued YouTube presence and have the video deleted. He also revealed that Sean's behavior had become so unstable that his father could no longer tolerate him living at home and he had since been living in his college dormitory instead. When Sean again filed DMCA's, I put Hilton in touch with DPR Jones so that they could speak directly. 
The reason Sean shut down his YouTube channel so quickly was that he was informed by his father that he would receive no financial support if the issue ended up in court, essentially leaving Sean to fend for himself legally. They are currently discussing what action will be taken in regards to Sean's recent accusations that DPR Jones is a pedophile. Hilton has asked me to emphasize that while the YouTube community as a whole has watched Sean behave in ways that are amoral and at times illegal, Sean truly believes that he is on the side of right and truly means well despite the reality of his actions. As Hilton put it, Sean's heart is made of gold, his mind is not. There is no excuse for Sean's actions, only to clarify, or this is not an excuse for Sean's actions, only to clarify the reality of the situation to people on both sides of the larger arguments that Sean has been a part of. It is my hope that this statement will put to rest a great deal of the current speculation regarding Venom Fang X and bring this long, bizarre debacle to a close. With his father now threatening to cut him off financially, Sean clearly felt he had no choice but to throw in the towel. About a week after Jordan Owen 42's video was uploaded, DPR Jones uploaded a message from Sean, in which Sean expressed his wishes to do away with his Venom Fang X persona and apologized for his disgusting accusations towards DPR Jones and for the numerous DMCA's he filed against various other YouTubers. However, he stated that he still did not fully understand copyright law, implying that he was largely ignorant of his wrongdoing, which seems highly unlikely given the nearly two years of consistent and repeated schooling he had received on DMCA regulations. I've caused a rift between atheists and Christians. I have not been dialoguing in the way I should, and I've done things that are deplorable and wrong. I have not been an example, even though my channel was the most subscribed Christian channel on YouTube, I acted in a deplorable manner, not fully appreciating the responsibility that I had having the amount of influence and audience that I had, and I am I'm ashamed of some of the things I've done, so I think I just need to take a moment to apologize to, to all of you watching this video. DPR Jones, in particular, uh, who I said some disgusting things about, I have to apologize to directly. DPR Jones has been a gentleman to me. He's actually been very kind and friendly. Recent DMCA's that I filed, um, I admit I don't understand copyright laws, I don't understand the DMCA, so what I did was wrong, using something that I didn't fully understand. In the name of disassociating myself with the Venom Fang X persona, um, I have of course closed my channel. Um, I'm no longer going to be going by that username. And uh, I've requested that... Uh, obviously I have no right to ask anyone to remove their videos, but as a kindness to me, um, to try and, in, in the name of putting Venom Fang X behind me, um, I've asked Thunderfoot and DPR Jones to consider removing some of the videos that are specifically designed to highlight the things that I've done wrong in the past in order that I can move beyond them and to not have to live with that as, a, as my shadow forever. As genuine as this goodbye video appears, it must be noted that Sean has always been a showman, and a good one at that. While there may have been some honest sentiments mixed in, it is disturbing to see him still insisting that people remove videos critical of him. It should also be noted that Sean's history on YouTube has proved that he does not keep his word. Oh, oh, oh. hey boys and girls! It's your favorite Bible store! <laughs> We're going to have a great time today! I'm super excited! Just four months later, Sean posted a link on his Facebook page to a video on a new channel called Bible Barney. The video featured a warped evangelical version of the PBS character Barney the Dinosaur as a hand puppet. Although the voice is obviously altered to imitate the Barney character, many people immediately recognized the similar preaching style and apologetics as the same that Sean had used so many times in the past. And basically what it is, is a puppet in front of a green screen showing images like what PCS did when he came back, you know, with the green screen and the images in the background and all that. Yeah like that. At about four minutes and 
30 seconds into the video, if you watch the original video, or about 5.32 into the one where someone who had found it, which was the video that was sent to me, you can see or hear the voice changing software fuck up, and you can hear what sounds like Sean's voice. So he is both fully man and fully God. And because the wages of sin is death. That's not enough for you? Okay. Well, we have the visuals, we have the voice software not fucking up. How about the texts that he used in his old videos? You know, the white text with kind of outlined in a bright color? Yeah, this video has them too. And you know how he used to use red and blue? Yeah, exactly like in the style he used to do here. In the lower right hand corner, there is a shadow, and this profile looks to me like Sean. To date, there is no conclusive evidence that Bible Barney is Sean himself, but all things considered, it probably is. Sean is an interesting study in how a mixture of isolation, arrogance, charisma, unabashed dishonesty, and extreme religiosity can result in such an entertaining freak show for the masses, but humiliation and headaches for those personally involved. It has to have occurred to Sean's family by now that he has the makings of a future Kent Hovind, Benny Hinn, Jimmy Swaggart, I've sinned against you, my Lord. Peter Popoff, maybe even a Jim Jones. Despite his mind-blowing ignorance of science and the explanations of naturally occurring phenomena, Sean is quite intelligent, calm and well-spoken, dresses to impress, and has the ability to attract a large following of unquestioning sheep. Just as he has been manipulated and brainwashed by dogma, he has demonstrated that he has the potential to do the same to others. He has already gotten a taste of how lucrative such an avenue can be if pursued fully. Such temptation is hard to resist. We haven't heard the last of Sean. He'll be back, no doubt spewing the same unsubstantiated creationist tripe as always, and searching desperately for connection that can never be made when built upon a foundation of nonsense. For those of you who are relatively new to YouTube and are not fully up to speed on who and what Venom Phoenix is, you may be a little confused by all the contempt for him over his latest string of DMCAs. And if you are a Christian who is falling for his sap and feeling sorry for him, please take heed. Do not give him one cent of your money, and do not let him lie to you. Venom Phoenix has a long, sordid, and well-documented history of pathologically lying and repeatedly breaking the law through fraud and perjury. In this video, I will highlight much of the antisocial and sometimes criminal behavior of Venom Phoenix who will just go on crying persecution and unwanted hatred by the evil, godless atheists who have never demanded anything of him except that he tell the truth. This is the story of a boy named Sean. Hey guys, uh, really, really quick video. Um, I would like to send out a request for a, uh, a video camera. You know, I'm in university and I simply can't afford a nice camera. Um, but I know some of you guys out there, uh, either you are endowed with financial blessing or you... Indeed, some people are endowed with financial blessings, and Sean is one of them. He comes from an affluent family who lives in a mansion. Yet here he is, painting himself as the starving student, relying on the kindness of strangers and trying to get a free camera. And, needless to say, he was successful. Just three days after this request, he posted this video. So a really nice guy sent me a message, said, yeah, I'll buy you a camera. So this one guy, I'm not going to drop his name now. I, I don't want him to get harassed, but uh, he, he went out. He made a name for himself by producing a number of videos about creationism and what he thinks are refutations of biological evolution and the Big Bang Theory. His videos inspired the YouTube user Thunderfoot's epic series entitled Why Do People Laugh at Creationists? which was named for one instance of unintentional hilarity. When I claim that there was a worldwide flood, I, I get laughed at. I get laughed at. I get laughed at. Overwhelmed by the lunacy and inaccuracy of Sean's statements about cosmology, biology, and everything else that he clearly has no understanding of, it was Thunderfoot who dubbed him the poster boy for creationist stupidity, or PCS for short. In July 2008, Sean abruptly deleted many of his videos and announced that he was shutting down his ministry because he claimed that he had received death threats. Hey guys, this is Venom Fang X with some bad news. 
I've been receiving death threats and uh, against my life and the life of my family, my my loved ones. So uh, I'll be shutting down this ministry. I simply can't continue it while this is going on. Um, I've contacted the authorities and the police, and uh, these aren't just idle threats. I've been getting threats since I've opened up my ministry. I've you know I've understood from the beginning that people hate God. And they hate people who speak about God. But these people, uh, these ones in particular who've been making these threats, they also have personal information about me, which would make it possible for them to uh, come to my house and actually hurt me or the people I care about. So uh, I've been in contact with the police, and I'm taking every precaution necessary to guard against these twisted individuals. But uh, until then, and probably indefinitely, I will be closing down this ministry. I've deleted many... I said, mm, okay and they chose to disobey God. So we have been separated from God, and that's where death and pain and the loss of your arms came in. So, does God have a moral obligation to heal someone who has sinned against him? Absolutely not. So, why doesn't God heal amputees? Because they don't deserve their arms. We deserve to die. That's what the Bible teaches. Sorry if you don't like that. Harsh. Apparently, in Sean's case, the price of God's love is the forfeit of compassion and empathy for his fellow human beings. And it gets worse. We read in Deuteronomy 28, a book written by Moses, a curse that was promised to the Israelites if they rejected their God. I can't read all of Deuteronomy 28 to you right now, but you can look it up on the internet if you'd like. It talks about how Israel will be scattered to the ends of the world, and how they will be few in number, and their enemies would destroy them if they rejected their God. Now, if we look at recent tragedies, and they are tragedies, like the Holocaust, we can't say that was God's blessing on Israel. That was clearly not a blessing. So, it seems to me Israel has rejected their Messiah. I, I can't explain it any other way. The promises of the curse on Israel, if they rejected their God, have come true. Deuteronomy 28 has come true. So Sean has stated outright that the murder of six million European Jews during the Holocaust was divine punishment for the ancient Israelites rejecting the Christian Messiah. What makes this statement all the more cold-blooded is the fact that Sean's own family, which he has claimed on numerous occasions to love so dearly, is Jewish. This means that he has to believe that his own family deserves the same fate. Over the years, Sean has... ...of my videos, and, uh, this is, this is it, guys. He did not, however, close his channel, although he clearly implied that he would. He continued to log in, rate, and favorite videos. In a few weeks, all was forgiven or forgotten, and he was back to making videos again, with no explanation of the outcome of the alleged death threats. Many viewers agreed that there probably had been no such threats, and that he had never had any intention of closing his channel or shutting down his ministry. A popular theory posits that Sean had been unable to cope with being incapable of countering the many thorough refutations from Thunderfoot's videos, and instead invented a story of receiving death threats as a way of getting rid of all of his refuted videos without conceding that it was all garbage. Or perhaps he just needed a dose of sympathy from his well-wishers. Not to mention aggravate the paranoia that some Christians have from their imaginary persecution in the predominantly Christian West. One thing that had always left Sean open for ridicule is how heavily he censors his channel. Anyone, theist or non-theist, who posted negative or critical comments, or sent him less than appreciative private messages, was immediately blocked and their comments promptly removed. But Sean was not content on merely censoring his own channel. He decided that he was going to censor other people's channels as well. In the summer of 2008, several videos featuring Venom Fang X were disabled by Digital Millennium Copyright Act takedown notices. While a few may have contained legitimate copyright claims, such as unauthorized re-uploads in their entirety, the overwhelming majority were refutations, criticisms, and parody. I mean, he went out on a limb and he just bought me. Uh, it's not here yet, I'm using my old camera right now, but he went out and he just bought me uh, like an $800 camera. So, let's sum up. Sean comes from money but he misrepresented himself as someone who could not afford a digital camcorder, and then he accepted an $800 camera. Of course, this wouldn't be his only act of acquiring gifts and money through deception. Sean liked to exploit his Christian subscribers' devotion to their faith by encouraging them to donate to his ministry. 
thereby proving that any greedy, unscrupulous person with a camera and no supervision can open up a YouTube account and call it a ministry. Despite his favorite claim that atheists have no love or morality within them, he has displayed callous attitudes toward other people under the guise of God's judgment. When answering the question, why won't God heal amputees, he coldly replied, Where in the Bible does it say God will heal amputees? End of story, right? God never said he would, he doesn't. That aligns perfectly with my definition of God. My definition of God does not say God will heal me if I cut off my arm. Why, why should God heal amputees? He's the one that allowed you to lose your arm in the first place. So here's the, here's the real question. Why do people lose their arms? Well, the Bible answers that in the first three pages. Mankind was created in connection with God. Everything was perfect. There was no pain, no death, no sickness. It was, it was great. It was good. However, God gave mankind a choice. Love and obey God or hate and disobey God. The reason God did that. Forced love is basically rape, and God loves us too much to force us to love Him. So He says, choose. So mankind.